We we'll welcome you all tonight in the name of the Lord, those who have joined us in live stream as well. We're in the Gospel of John. This will be our second installment in this volume. We'll be covering verses 4 and 5. <clears throat> now you may recall that in Genesis, Moses begins with the natural creation. John begins with the new creation. That requires that he commence with the one who is charged with carrying out the salvation, who himself is the heart of the message of salvation. So he's going to begin by expounding Christ to us. Now he doesn't focus at first on the need for salvation because it ought to be evident that if God initiated salvation, that's enough to prove that it's needed. Now, as simple as that seems, that is not general knowledge. There's no need to establish, for John to establish spiritual poverty and depravity of man. That's not necessary at this point. For if men weren't in that condition, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking about salvation. If man's condition was, if there was a remedy for it, outside of divine intervention, we, we wouldn't have a gospel and Jesus never would have come. As you know, men may debate about the fallen condition of man whether he's, as some have chosen, total depravity, whether he's incapable of doing good or not, you can debate about this. But how, why would there be a savior if this wasn't the case? Who is able to substantiate that the idea of a savior is valid if there's anything at all good in man, or if man has any capability at all, so far as God counts capability, how, just how, would you establish the need for a savior, see? Yeah. So there's, you can come at this from a higher direction than bad duking it out here in the lower level. You can come at a higher, higher level. If man hadn't, all men, hadn't sinned and come short of the glory of God, there might be a reason to debate this. If we could cite a few men that didn't sin and come short of the glory of God, all right, that would give room to kind of hash these things out. But we don't have a single exception of anybody Amen. in Adam's lineage that didn't sin and come short of the glory of God. And if, can Satan really have dominion over a free person? No. See, a person, these questions have to be asked and answered by thinking people. People, people they get off on these rabbit trails. If Jesus frees a person, Satan, at that point, Satan's lost his dominion. That's what freedom is. Can men be dead in trespasses and sins by nature the children of wrath and be called free moral agents? Is that really a proper way to assess this condition? Well, a thinking person should be able to say, well, no, how, how can this be the remedy? How can man be swallowed up by sin and be a free moral agent? Free moral agent means he can make moral choices of right and wrong, see? But if nobody is made, <laughs> glory to God, if nobody in the history of the world has made a right choice, then exactly what is the argument for free moral agency? Where, where is it at? We can prove that man does not have the capacity. Yeah, yeah. You say, well, he has the capacity, he just doesn't use it. Well, what's, what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't use it, how do you know he has it? Yeah, yeah. 
The, the condition of man is described as without hope and without God in the world. That's the description. So John will present the Savior in a context of hopelessness, apart from, apart from hopelessness. He will confirm that sustaining is as necessary as obtaining. Got to have them both. And that you can't have one, of, one or both unless someone outside yourself is doing the sustaining. As is proved by the first man and the first woman who the first time took a plummet. Similar to Genesis, John's going to begin with light. Remember, Genesis begins with light. John's going to begin with light because in the kingdom of God, everything starts with light. Illumination, enlightenment, understanding, comprehension, awareness, perception, those sort of things. Everything starts with that. Before the condition of men could effectively be addressed, his ignorance had to be dealt with. <laughs> That's why the Paul said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. But see, some people are quite content for you to be ignorant. doesn't bother them at all. But it does holy people. So there's a necessity to have what we're going to be covering some tonight, light. This perfectly accords with John's declaration in 1 John. He says, this is the, uh, this then, this then... In view of what we said, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Yeah. Yeah, see that? That's the fundamental thing that's got to be seen. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. We're going to learn that darkness can't put out the light. Yeah. But the light can eradicate darkness. John 1, 4 and 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life, that's that life, was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's his opening picture. Now notice that John began his epistle by speaking about the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God. The Word was God. Now he's talking about Him. <laughs> he's talking about Him. That the Word was Him. Not it. It was Him. He uses that pronoun twice in verse 3. Two more times in our text. Him. He started out talking about the Word. But he was talking about Him from before the foundation of the world. Now he's going to talk about him in the context of this world. So we refer to him as him. Him. He looks at the creation and thinks of an, the evolutionist. Doesn't think of him when they think about the origin of the world. They don't, the evolutionist doesn't think about him. That's why they, that's why they can't be right. They think of an impersonal process, an impersonal power, an impersonal method of some sort, although how you can bring a method out of chaos is an interesting thing. They never, they never seem to address that. They're willing to admit things were not as organized in the beginning, in their beginning, as they are now, but they can't explain how it got from chaotic and random down to, we can, we, because we have a hymn. Intelligent design. Now, yeah. What is wrong with some kind of an intelligent? So I was talking to Brother Boyce yesterday. I said, "What do they argue for? An unintelligent design? What yeah. does that mean?" <laughs> well, that means that you have an unintelligent person making the assessment. Yeah. <laughs> in, in him. Mm -hmm. In him. So the point is now the person of Christ. Yes. 
Not what he does. We're not, we're not down to what he does. Not even down to what he said. It's who he is in him. What Jesus is was not derived. It didn't come from. It didn't come from. What you are is derived. You got it from someone else. You're, by nature, you got it from Adam. By grace, you got it from Christ. But it's what's in you is derived. But what's in Jesus is not derived. It's not the product of human ingenuity. It's not a reward for him doing well. It was not an achievement wrought by him in this world. With the exception of his humanity, now that's his humanity is the only exception to the rule. His humanity was involved in, involved him humbling himself. So that aspect of Christ, his humanity, that was something he had to come down to partake of. So exclude, ex and that was voluntary. So excluding that, and that had to do with God's eternal purpose or he wouldn't have done it. So excluding that, nothing that Jesus had was derived or borrowed or inherited or didn't come that way at all. What Jesus is, he is by nature. And nature, only God can change the nature. Your nature can't be changed by like new habits. Amen. Even though people teach it, people teach it can't be changed this way. There's whole programs mm -hmm. built on this postulate that you can change your nature by new habits and by routine. But you see, it's all a lie. Amen. Only God can change a nature. Yeah. Uh -huh. People think they can change nature? Well. I, you might have a small task. Change the nature of a fly into a frog. You can say, we'll start small. We'll start to, to change the nature of a germ. See, man can't change nature. He can't induce, in, induce a procedure that changes nature. So if, you, if a person undertakes to change their basic nature, by a methodology or a routine or a system or a series of steps or whatever, it's just an exercise in vanity. Yeah. You've just you've taken a an ugly. Well, I hate to use this as a simile. I hope you understand. You can take an ugly person and put a new suit on them, but they're still an ugly person. <laughs> In him, in him. It was not on him, in him. Yeah. Power came on Samson. Uh -huh. Spirit came on Samson. Mm -hmm. We're talking about in him. Yeah, in him was life. Yeah. It's in him. It wasn't in Adam. It had to be breathed into Adam. Right. right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Had to be breathed yeah. into Adam. In him was life. Every other person who has life, it was given to him. But Jesus, in him was life. He had it. John frequently associates the Savior with life. Here's uh, John 5, 26. As the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Yes. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See? This is the son of whom God, to whom God referred as God. He said, he saith to the son, he saith, but under the son, he saith. Thy throne, O God. This is the Father. Yeah. So the people debate, was Jesus God? This is a hot debate in modern circles. 
is stupid. It's a, because God, the Father himself, said to the Son, O oh God, and he's also called in Titus 2.13, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, so. But the particular point being made here is that Jesus has the power to confer life. That's the point that he's going to make. That aside from Christ, one might have thought only God had this power. The Father, only the Father had this power. But now he tells us, no, the Son of God has power to confer life. Amen. Now John built on this in his uh, epistle, the fifth chapter. He said, now if a man see a man sin, a sin that's not unto death. A sin unto death means that death is the outcome of the sin. Like Judas sinned, he died. He, Uzzah sinned, he died. It's the, a sin unto death is a sin that mandates the death. But a sin that's not unto death is a sin that a person didn't die because he committed it. So if you see a brother sin a sin not unto death, he shall ask. And he, God through Christ, will give him life. That's what it says. Yeah, amen. He will give him life. Because the person who God had already given life asked, this person over here needs life. Yes, amen. See, don't misassess people. When you, judge, when you see people that are wandering, don't misassess them. Yeah. Don't misassess them. Mm -hmm. If people are walking bad, it's life's, life's the issue. Yes, amen. Life to God is the issue. Uh -huh. It's not that they're just doing this wrong and doing that wrong. It's li they're, they're not alive. That's what the problem is. They're not alive to God. That's yeah. the problem. Amen. If you are alive to God, you've got this promise from God now. Yes, yeah. It'll take you some insight and courage to pray it. You'll ask, well, you're, done. you're not dictating, you just ask. Amen. God says, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll give him life because you asked me to do it. Yeah. Amen. Whew, what a promise. But Jesus, he never asked to... He has, he can give the life himself. Jesus said, now don't labor, don't labor for the meat that perishes. Don't, don't build your life around making a living. Amen. That's what he meant. I just, don't labor for the meat that perishes. Don't, don't wear yourself out for that and then have a few crumbs to give the Lord. Don't do that. But labor for the meat that endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give. Yeah. <laughs> see, we're talking about he had the power to give. Oh, see, amen. shall give unto you. Yeah. For him is God the Father seal. That says he's this. You want life? You're going to have to get it from my Son. Amen. amen. That's right. If you're going to get it from my Son, you can't have another major pursuit. Yeah, that's right. He won't give it to you. If you got a major pursuit, it's something else. This has got to be your major Amen. pursuit. Amen. If a person does not willing is not willing to be subject to God, there is such a thing as being willing in the day of his power. Uh -huh. yes. There is such a thing as that. Uh -huh. And you can bank on that. Now, some more statement about Jesus giving life. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life. Yeah. There it is, see? Yeah. So the less of Jesus there is, the less life there is. Amen. Yes. Huh? Uh -huh. The less people preach about Jesus, the less life is available to the people. The less an assembly concentrates on Christ, the less life is liable to be there. He'll give it to you. If you want to be receptive to God, you need life. Amen. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm the one that came down from heaven so you could have it. I will give unto them, John 10, 28, I will give unto them Eternal life. Yeah. Uh, and I'll sell it to them. Yeah. I'll give them eternal life. Yeah, we're establishing that 
in him was life. Mm -hmm. That is, he can confer life. And these, these statements Amen. buttress that. Is thou hast given him, this is Jesus praying to God, thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Before Jesus could save any man, he had to be over all men. Amen. Yes. Why? Because giving life is a discretionary. Mm -hmm. yes. It's a discretionary exercise. Yes. Jesus doesn't give life to everybody. Yes. Even though everybody sinned, everybody doesn't get life. Uh -huh. But before he could give it to anybody, he had to be over everybody, or as he said, power over all flesh. Uh -huh. So that when the father said, "Here, yeah, I'm giving these, I'm giving these to you," mm -hmm. then he will give them eternal life. Amen. That's right. Amen. He has the power to give life, the kind of life that causes one to be eager for the Lord. See, this is life that makes one alive to God, sensitive yeah. of God, conscious of God, aware of God. They can see God in everything, whereas before they didn't see Him in anything. Yeah. Alive to God. So in Him was life, and then He has the life that is in Him, was the light of men. <laughs> what? Some versions say the light of all people. In other words, if men are going to be able to see, they have to have life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judah, yes. This life to God that you were just talking about, <clears throat> life is activity, so when we're alive to God, we're active for Him yeah, as opposed right. to someone else. And this activity isn't just busy work, it's productive activity. You, yeah, get, right. you get things done because the work of God, when He gives you work, He gives you the ability and the resources to also do what he's told you to do. Amen. Amen. The life was the light of men. The person, Jesus said, the person who walks in the light mm -hmm. that comes from him does not stumble. Yeah. Amen. He stumbleth not. Mm -hmm. He doesn't blunder. He doesn't make a bunch of mistakes. Doesn't veer off the path. Not if he uh, is following the Son of God. He shall have the light of life. John 8, 12. So that's, that's the same. Yeah, amen. <laughs> same thing our text says. Yeah. Also, he said, he came into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not, should not abide in darkness. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus didn't come so people could stay ignorant of God. Amen. So they could remain unlearned. Amen. So they could lock into being an everlasting novice. Mm -hmm. This is not why Jesus came into the world. Yeah. It is why Satan is in the world. Now, we ought to say this, that the people that aren't advancing, it's because of lack of life, that's why. But there's different stages of death, see. All death's not the same death. Jairus' daughter, she just died. She probably was kind of good looking still. Still had a comely appearance. She just, just died. That's how people are when they just die. Well, I thought would have named the son. Now, he's a little, he's a little more advanced. He'd... He was, the funeral was already going on, funeral procession, so he, he probably looked a lot, a lot worse than Jairus' daughter. And, and then Lazarus, he is, he's really bad. He was four days, he's just, mortification set in. Nobody wanted to be around Lazarus. They couldn't, they could, they could, they could stand in the room and look at Jairus' daughter. They could carry widow named son, but hey, nobody wanted to run Lazarus. But see, there really was essentially no difference in the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all three dead. Yeah, that's, right. now, that's the same way morally and spiritually. There are some people that uh -huh. they look kind of good. Uh -huh. But they're dead. Uh -huh. There's other people, nothing good, but it's very obvious. They're like, they're spiritually like Adam was, like uh, uh, Lazarus was uh -huh. physically. 
They stink. <laughs> it's that bad. They have a moral odor about them. But there's no difference between them and the people that look really good. They're dead. Dead. <laughs> now, Jesus said, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, our Son, cleanses us from all sin. So we're, Jesus said, if a man follow me, he'll not walk in darkness. If you just, fo if you just, if you just follow me, you won't walk in darkness. Amen. And if you don't walk in darkness, you won't stumble. So if you stumbled, you weren't following got drawn off the path someplace. Here is the firm that life, that the life Jesus possesses is the light of men. I mentioned the light for illumination, comprehension, enlightenment, understanding, perceiving. These are the issuance of life. When a person understands, it's because they're alive. Mm -hmm. When a person perceives, it's because they're alive. Alive to God, we're talking about. Alive to God. Amen. Follow me, you'll not walk in darkness. So in him was life, and the, the life... <laughs> Yes, sir, that's kind of something. The life was the light Amen. Yeah. of men. Uh -huh. The life was. Yeah. Not the routine, the life. Yeah. Not the rules, the, the life. Mm -hmm. Not the commandments, the life. Amen. The life of him was the light of men. So everybody needs a living Christ or they get no light now. Amen. It should be right up front about this. If a person doesn't have Christ, no light, no understanding, no illumination, no perception, no comprehension. Oh, it has to have the light of life. And the light, I'll first he started out saying the word, he said the hymn, now he's talking about the light now. The light shineth in darkness. Other versions say his light shines in darkness. Or the life light shines in darkness. The Message Bible says this is Christ's life. His life, right. his life was the light of men. So it's Christ's life that is the source of the light, the light illumination of men. Amen. It's Christ's life that brought things to light. See? <laughs> yes. His life was revealed in his words and deeds and his preferences and what grieved him. See, that revealed him and his life Amen. was the light. His presence is what brought things to light so people could see it. People didn't see, for instance, the scribes and the Pharisees till Jesus came. Then in his light, Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's right. yeah. and with some words from him, it illuminated the whole situation. These people had a obtained religious dignity. Uh -huh. But Jesus pointed out, hey, these are sepulchers. They're like sepulchers. Yeah, yeah. They're graves men are walking over. Don't realize what they are. Yeah. And you can read about Christ, the things that he preferred. Like if someone asked him something about the kingdom, he always said something about it. Someone sought his aid and cried out with faith. He stopped. Even if he was on the way to Jairus' house, that's when the woman with the issue of blood confronted him. He stopped, stopped going to Jairus' house. See, this is the way Jesus is. His entrance among men is described as light springing up. Matthew 4, 16. Zechariah said at the coming of the Messiah was him coming from God to give light to them that sit in darkness. <laughs> That's why Jesus came, see? This is looking at it from one particular angle. From another, he came to save, you know, and so forth. But here's one that you can't leave out. He came to give light to people set in darkness, to give understanding 
to those that were swaddled in ignorance, he, to enable those to perceive that couldn't make things out what they were at all. It's bringing up. Jesus was a light to, quote, lighten the Gentiles, Luke 2.32. <laughs> the whole Gentile world was sitting in darkness. He came to sh shed light on life and immortality. Jesus is referred to as the light, John 1, 7. The true light, John 1, 9. The light of the world, John 8, 12. See, so it's... With Him comes, and it, with Christ, comes an environment of illumination and light. Because he, he, His life is the light. If we aim to have Jesus' life, Manifested in the assembly, yeah. understanding will proliferate Amen. throughout the whole. Because his life is the light of men. It's not light encapsulated in scholarship. It's not that, not that kind of light. It's not academic light. That's not what it is but light that promotes spiritual understanding, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. discernment, comprehension, enlightenment. It's not a dead light, but a living light. See? Amen. And it says the light shines. The word means to make things evident, cause something to come into view, to appear, particularly to appear to the mind. That's the, for whatever it's worth, the lexical meaning of the word. The English word shine includes this meaning, to be imminent, conspicuous, and distinguished. So here comes Jesus. He was certainly conspicuous and, dis and uh, distinguished when he began his ministry. He stood out. Boy, he stood out from everybody else. Why? Because in him was life. And the, and the life shined forth like the rays of a, like the rays of a sun. Jeremy Waters talked about the effulgence. The effulgence, the, the, the that's the right. Thing that, that, the, 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 it caused something. It affected something. That's yeah. right. Yeah. John the Baptist is said to have been a bright and shining light. John 5.35. So standing among men, he like overshadowed the Pharisees and scribes, and so people went out from all over the place. But when Jesus came, he outshined John. Yeah. And John yielded. John yielded to it. And those who saw it left John and followed Christ. John the Baptist, he, see, he was a stark contrast to the religious leaders, but when Jesus came, that was he was even more so. Those who heard Jesus speak said, Never man spake like this man. That was the light shining. He's the only person that hurled this challenge out to men and never could get anyone to answer it. Mm -hmm. Which of you convinces me of sin? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else ever hurled that challenge out. Yeah, right. If any of us did, we'd, we'd get it for some pretty quick answers. Yeah. But he did. See, he was distinguished, eminent, stood out, shining. He was shining. That is to say, you can't be around Jesus and not know something different is there. He even be his enemy, you uh -huh. you know. <laughs> See the thing. One of the things that's a curse of the modern church is the ordinary, uh -huh. average. Uh -huh. It's a blight. Yes, amen. Anytime you see stuff that's average, ordinary, and there's ten million other people got the same thing. Uh -huh. Jesus is not there. Yeah. I'm sorry. Jesus is not there. Because he shines. Wherever he is, he shines. He shines. The sun can't come up and nobody knows it unless they're blind. Of course, under those conditions, it, uh, the light shines. He, outwardly, he was not distinct. Outwardly. I mean, he looked like an ordinary man. People could have thought nothing of arguing with him. Charging him falsely. Asking him dumb questions. That's because he, in shining, it wasn't an overt, uh -huh. 
shining. You had to hear something he said before you were kind of skeptical. Once you heard him, then you oh, you weren't so eager to ask him some kind of try and trapping question. Yeah. Once you heard him, See, well, it was shine, he was shining. In his words, he was shining. In his works, he was shining. Amen. That's why it was so serious that the people in Jerusalem didn't accept him, didn't believe him. He was shining. Yeah. The light shined in darkness. Other word says it goes on shining in the dark appears in darkness, continues to shine in the darkness, is shining in the darkness, keeps shining, and so forth. Uh, that was a lot of clumsy language, I think. Think how the Spirit uses the word darkness, how I use it. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. It's Isaiah 9, 2 and Matthew 4, 16, it says they sat in darkness. To open the eyes of them that, and turn them from darkness. To like the unfruitful works of darkness. You were sometimes darkness, the scripture says. The nights far spent the days at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. See, darkness is moral and spiritual night. It's where things are not seen as they really are. The things of God can't be seen, and the devil works freely in this kind of a environment. It's a domain that's dominated by the rulers of the darkness of this world. Darkness and light can't be mingled. What communion hath light with darkness? So it isn't that here's the room filled with darkness and Jesus walked into the room. No, that's the wrong at the wrong picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's a room of darkness. Jesus outside and he shines. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. It, he shines into the darkness. Uh -huh. He doesn't walk in the darkness. Yeah. He shines yes. in the darkness. So to bring people to Christ, you don't go walking in the darkness. Uh -huh. yeah. right. You got to have the light of life. You got to shine. Yeah. See the difference? You shine in the darkness. Right. So there you are, you're working in the same place with a bunch of Satan's children, uh -huh. but you're shining in. That's right. You're not in the darkness yourself. Because uh -huh. yeah. he delivered you from the power of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of God's dear son. So we're not in darkness. We're not in darkness. Right. We shine in. Yes. Brother Gibbon, even a <laughs> the warmth of the sun. Yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> 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 Those in Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, are not in darkness. Yeah. Amen. They've been called out of darkness, Peter said, 1 Peter 2, 9, into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. But their walk negates darkness. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just the fact that they live unto God shines into the, into the darkness. We see then by light shining in the darkness, it's not mingled with. It's not mingled with darkness at all. The life of Jesus and the carnal life cannot be blended. This also means Jesus himself doesn't enter the domain of darkness. He shines. See, by doing this, you're, you maintain a person, Christ first, you then, you maintain your fellowship with Christ. You don't step out of that in order to influence somebody. Amen. You influence them by your proximity to Christ, yeah. not by your proximity to them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. That's what's got to be seen. Yeah. And another technical point, that to see this light that shines in the darkness, you have to have eyes. Mm -hmm. You have to have eyes to see. Moses told Israel, God hadn't given you eyes to see. And if you want to take advantage of this, you've got to come to the light. Is what it says. He must come to the light. He that comes to the light. So here's the person sitting in darkness. The lights beam from external to that. Remember the lights 
beamed in there. There's enough light beamed in there they can follow it and come to Jesus. See, you've got to come Amen. out of darkness. You've got to come mm -hmm. to Jesus. Jesus has done come as close as he's going to come. That's right. He's not going to come any closer. Uh -huh. And he maintained his aloofness from the world all the while he was here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyone got Jesus' attention? They were discontent with the world and so forth, you know. Come to the light. This necessarily infers you cannot influence people for Christ by identifying with them in their darkness. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's not the kind of thing Paul meant when he said, I become all things to all men, that by all means I might save some. Yeah. He wasn't saying, I'll get one of those electronic cigarettes so I can reach the smokers, you know. And I'll put ginger ale in my glass so it'll look like I'm drinking That's liquor, right. you know. We'll go to a world event together. What he meant when he said, I become all things to all people, by all means I might save some. He's talking about people that had a bent toward God, but they were fundamentally uninformed. So he might even pay for their temple vow. No. Pay for their temple vow. I mean, go to the synagogue. Well, but it wasn't talking about changing his conduct so it looked like he was one of them. So the light shined into the darkness. Now, but the darkness comprehended it not. All right, now, at this point, a lot of versions, in my judgment, really did a bad job of translating this. Darkness up to this point was a domain, but here it's not a domain. It's people. Yeah. He personalizes darkness. Speaking of it as a person and persons rather than an environment. Paul did the same thing concerning both light and darkness. This is what he said. You were sometimes darkness. Yeah. Yeah. But now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. See, men are identified by the environment they're in. If they're walking in darkness, they themselves are darkness. They themselves tend to obscure the truth. When you're around people like this, truth gets misty and clouded. They are darkness. Not only do they walk in darkness, they are darkness. Not only do we walk in light, we are light. So a person's got to follow this figure. If the world, if if they're close to the world, see, first, if they're close to darkness, walking like they're darkness. If they're close to the world, they're worldly. <laughs> see, they're of the world, yeah. scriptures say. John said they, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. See, so you take on the trait of the environment yeah. They're, yeah. they're in. If, they're, if the earth is where they are at home, then they mind earthly things and will eventually be destroyed. So the environment we choose to live in makes us what we are. Amen. Walk in the light, children of light. Walk in darkness, children of darkness. Even further than that, walk in the light, you are light. Walk in darkness, you are darkness. The only acceptable environment is with Christ in heavenly places. There isn't any other acceptable environment. Now, there are some places on earth that make it very difficult to abide in this place where you've been seated. I, I, every person's got to, they got to judge themselves. They got to take, take charge now of your stewardship. You've got to decide whether where you're living promote, what kind of life does it promote? Nobody can make this decision for you. I got all the trouble of making my own decision. But you do have to make this decision. Because the environment you choose to live in will make you what you are. Either darkness or light. Either worldly or spiritual. Either earthly or heavenly. But here's what it says. 
Well, we're told, cast off the works of darkness. Get, get out of there. The darkness, now the light shined into the darkness, right? But the darkness comprehended it not. Other versions said it has not understood it, did not overcome it, apprehended it not, not extinguished it, has not suppressed it, has not mastered it, could not overpower it. Now these modern versions, they missed the point here. It isn't that they didn't that they didn't overcome it or that they tried to overthrow it and couldn't. Actually, I'm chagrined that any purported scholar would even think that's what it means. To overthrow the light, you would have to know it's light. You can't fight against something that you don't recognize as antithetical to you. So it philosophically is stupid. They should never have said this. It doesn't mean when it says that they didn't comprehend it, it doesn't mean they couldn't overcome it. They didn't know what it was. Yeah. They didn't try and overcome it. They didn't comprehend it. Yeah. Didn't understand it. Considering this text is not talking about the environment, see, that's the mistake that the translators made. They, th they thought he was talking about the environment, but he wasn't talking about the environment, he was talking about the people in the environment. Environment doesn't comprehend yeah, that's right. or not comprehend. Yeah. And how much, how much intelligence does it take, really? What kind of IQ do you have to have to know that? That an environment is not c cognitive. It's who's in the environment mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. They no doubt the dark people in dark no doubt no doubt knew something something happened, but they didn't know. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what it was. Yeah. That's why some people looked at Jesus who shined into the see, he was the light shined into the darkness. They looked at Jesus and they said, um, he's got a demon. They, did, they never did try and fight him. He's got a demon. Didn't understand, see? Other people looked at him and said, he's a Samaritan. It's obvious he's a Samaritan, which means he wasn't a Jew. Other people said, well, <laughs> he's using the power of Beelzebub. That's what he see. They didn't, they didn't comprehend it. Right. See, they didn't comprehend who he was. Why didn't they comprehend it? Because they weren't alive. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. In him was light, yeah. life, light, and the light was the life of men. So people that can't see are not alive. That the problem is they're dead. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. It isn't really that they can't see. That's not the problem. They can't see because dead men can't see. Yeah. Jesus explained their under he explained their situation. He said, "Why do you not understand my speech?" Well, because you cannot hear my word. In the Gospel of John, John observes, "Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes, hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes and understand with their hearts, and be converted that I should heal him." So. There's some people, only God knows this. I just want to make sure I'm not one, but there's some people God will not let see or be converted. Yeah, that's, right. that's what it says. Mm -hmm. They might be converted and I'd heal them, so I'm going to, bl I'm going to blind them. I don't want that to happen. Uh -huh. That's God's business now. It's not ours to yeah, try and yeah. determine who that is. Just that we're not one. Jesus also said, this is the condemnation, lights come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. They preferred this environment, and he tells you why, because their deeds are evil. Because they, their life was compatible with darkness, their deeds were evil. Oh, they may have looked philanthropic, they may have looked thoughtful and considered, but they were really evil.
The scripture says a natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, and neither can yeah. Yeah. he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. See, all of that briefly sums up the darkness comprehended it not. They didn't, light irradiated in there. It was like the re reflective light left and penetrated in there. They didn't know what it was. They didn't comprehend it, but they didn't come to it. And they, stayed, they, they chose darkness because their deeds were evil. They felt more comfortable there. See, some people feel more comfortable around sinners. Yeah. They actually do. Of course, that's because they're sinners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, no. you can, yes. You can see that the light shining makes manifest the nature of the person that's that it right. shines on. That's mm -hmm. right. Because you've, you've made this point of the light shining on those who are in darkness, who love darkness, who were darkness, and they didn't comprehend it. But whenever you think about the other side of the matter, whenever the light shines on a person who is who's been given life from the Lord, oh, yeah. they are actually drawn to That's that right. light. They come C to the come light. Come to the light, mm -hmm. amen. That their deeds might be made manifest. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God. That's right. So God can take the total the total answer. Set it squarely before men, truth incarnate. Surround that life with all kind of miraculous manifestations and superiority in both character and speech and deeds, and it still not be comprehended. Still wasn't comprehended. You you read the Gospels, you take great delight, just thrills your soul to read what Jesus did, but it doesn't thrill everybody's soul. To read or hear about what Jesus did. Why not? Because they're in darkness. Yeah. Why are they in darkness? They're not alive. Amen. Jesus is a living Christ. Amen. And dead people can't respond to him yeah. unless God quickens them. Yes. So the answer that Jesus gave was, walk while you have the light. Yes. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. So, this light is transmitted to people in in a discretionary manner, and there apparently is like some kind of a time frame that yeah. uh -huh. Jerusalem didn't uh, didn't or didn't respond appropriately within the time frame of afraid of the day of their visitation. Yes. I I don't I surely there's nobody here like this, but if there's somebody here that God's been dealing with. And you kind of been lingering, you know. You better, uh, you better stop that. Yeah. Better respond to the light. Come to light while you have it. While you have it. Yes. That's why when like you see you're sitting here, and all of a sudden, ooh, things begin to kind of mm -hmm. open up. Get closer. Amen. Draw in nice. Say, Martha, I'm going to be busy in here listening to Jesus now. Amen. And I got time to come in the kitchen now. That's right. While you have the light, yes. walk and he'll not take it for If you walk in the light, he'll not withdraw the light. Amen. Amen. Have done with darkness, because as Paul said to the Thessalonians, why you're children of the day. Yeah. Does it make sense for you to walk in darkness? Amen. For you to not uh, be sure about what you're doing, you know? Isn't that a wonderful Amen. passage of Scripture? I, uh, I told Sister June, I said, it's going to take me a little longer on this text. This is a little, a little more weighty, and I still wasn't satisfied with what I got, but it's a lot there. I recommend it just to kind of ponder it, you know, and, and think about it. In Him was life, and the life, the life, not the information, the light, life was the light of man. Amen. Experience this to some degree that you, you 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 see something, but you see you sense that it's like trees. men as trees. Mm -hmm. You press in anyway, but that's because you're a child of the light. That's, that's right. why you press that's in. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I really appreciated this point that you made of Jesus shining in into the darkness mm -hmm. and yeah. and us responding. I mean, the Lord had to give us eyes to see this light, uh -huh. and I was just. 
uh, told a story yesterday of a man who was in a, a very dangerous situation and he could have easily died but the Lord preserved him but, but how he did it was he it, it was very dark where he was but there was a light that he could see oh. yeah. and he had to go to that light <laughs> Amen. That's it. in Amen. order to, to be saved yes. and, and he was saved but he had to get to the light yeah now, if, you, if you've never had this confidence before, let me encourage you that your your life can be detected more than you think. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. Amen. You have more influence than you think. Amen. And so uh, shine bright. Yes. Shine as brightly as you can. Don't, yes. don't uh, put a bushel over it. Yeah. <laughs> let it shine. Amen. Yes, but was it Judah? You've been brought out of darkness into marvelous light. Mm. Marvelous light. Light is <laughs> revealing as it is, but we haven't just been brought into light. That would have been good enough, but he's brought us into his yes. marvelous Marvel light. Day. And you know, I, somewhere this is in this lesson, but the psalmist said, In thy light uh -huh. we see light. Amen. That's right. How's that? Yeah. So being as this light is shining, to be able to see the light, uh, that. Amen. That's right. And you notice he didn't say, I am a light. Yeah. He's the light. So, see, people say, well, I can see some light in Muhammad. No, you can't. He is the light. He is. He, John, yeah. remember, yeah. the day light. Yeah, that's right. He was a bright light. Uh -huh. Bright light. Yeah. For, for, but his wick, he had a wick. <laughs> Jesus doesn't have a wick. <laughs> All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. We thank You that in Him was life, and that life is the light of men. We confess that we want more of this light. We delight in it. Amen. And pray that You would evermore give us this bread. In Jesus' name, amen.